everybody. Thanks for coming around again. I had a great month last month, but it did put me behind a bit, set me back. Didn't get my video out last month because, of course, I had the great video interview with Sasha Stone, which was a wonderful boost to what I'm doing as an artist and my promotion of how important art really, really is. It's really hard to get it across. And then also I was doing a four course series at the New Earth University. So that took up all of my time. There's eight hours worth of this information that you can tap into over there at New Earth University. And I have, I'll put a link down below. And of course on my website, there's links. We're going to make the statement that art will save the world. I know this is a big statement, but it's because art is connected to humans' creativity. And it's our creativity that is going to launch us into the golden age successfully. If we don't have our creativity intact, we're not going to get very far. That's how important art is. So art will save the world. And let me count the ways. So people in countries that have been colonialized, which by the way, by definition, means the act of bringing into subjugation. Those people, you and me, are trained in school to think that art is just a sidekick of all the other subjects, you know, history, geography, and so on. This is by design. The first thing to go when budget cuts tighten up is, you guessed it, the arts. And there are a people, they're called the Omo people, and they live in Ethiopia, in the Omo River Basin. And they live their whole entire existence as artists. And they even dress up as much as they can in nature. But I'm hearing plastic is seeping into their culture and they're starting to wear that now, sadly. So once artists graduate from high school into the fine art category, it really gets crazy. You have this anything goes attitude, such as my favorite that I always talk about is Catalan's Big Banana. And this banana is taped to a wall, sells for tens of thousands of dollars, but you don't even get Catalan's Banana. Oh no, you just get a little piece of paper and how to assemble your own banana on your own wall. So I honestly believe that there's no art movement since the Impressionist era, which ended in the early 1900s, that has really held any of the beauty of the art that preceded it, that period of time. And you've got in the very beginning, after that, you've got suprematism, and then you have the socialist and political ideology of the constructivism period. You've got pop art, minimalism, and then finally on the other end, we're going into crypto art now. And then you think of everything in between. And really, honestly, I see nothing but the normalization of ugly, garish trends in art, which is deemed high art by Art Academy aficionados. And these sentinels of academentia behave as if there were a visual propagandist agenda afoot that must be coveted at all costs in order to denigrate art and keep her chained in the basement. And you got to admit, they do their work very well. I mean, have you seen some of that minimalist art? Here's a $3 million wall in a museum, and they've got like a line of linoleum coming out of it to the center of the room. And that's minimalism. A far cry from the beauty of the past. So what we're never told <coughs> is, 
that for one thing about art, there's pure magic in the actual process of creating art. And art has a much higher purpose than its face value image because art has the power to bring heaven to earth. And art is alchemy. So, you know, you learn to read so that you can learn about the world. You learn to write so that you can express yourself. But in my dreams, I would hope that one learns art so that one might learn to create majesty upon this plane. That was once the measure, but today art has been hijacked and so far removed from its original purpose. It's about time somebody said something and that person is me. So I'll hope, I hope you support me in this journey. Art is the missing link. Those who sit in seats of power, they require us to read and write that we will obey their laws, right? And abide by them and participate in their fantastic fiduciary entrainment camps. Beyond that, they really have no need for us to learn the frivolity of the true purpose of art. So now it's up to you and I to spread the word. It's been too far gone now that people don't even, art doesn't even register in their minds the importance of it. And this is a really hard sell and it's a hard road to hoe. So I do hope you come along with me to let people know just how important our creativity is. And I thank you in advance for that because our adversaries need us to create for them on their behalf on many an occasion that they themselves are unable to create. Let that sink in. And this is because they may even be of a different ilk than us humans. And, you know, I was toying with the idea of putting that in here, the fact that they don't know how to create. And there was one day that went by where I was listening to an assortment of different things. And it was said three times in that day by three different people. And so I said, this is my affirmation that I am going to say they do not know how to create. Our adversaries use us to do all their creating. Therefore, when a creative project furthers their control agenda, be it cinematic or, or even an art installation or whatever it is, they pay artists really highly for their artistic contributions. And it's when we humans get creative outside the realm of our indentured slavery that we are duly admonished and ridiculed as artists, as crazy fools, and left to starve. Same modus operandi as today with the rampant censorship. Old trick, new day. Creative people are extremely hard to rein in, and maverick artists especially must be kept in poverty and they must be seen as mad, and they must die young. Let that be a lesson, young vagabond. You have defied our code of obedience. The decode of that being, don't awaken the masses with your inspiration and new found abilities to manifest your dreams. Most importantly, for our self-appointed leaders, everyone must believe that being an artist takes a special talent. When in fact we are all born highly creative, Winslow Homer said it best, what they call talent is nothing but the capacity for doing continuous hard work in the right way. So simple makes so much sense. So I did say art will save the world, right? We got a little off track there. 
when we learn the process of creation through the study of art from a young age, we learn how to merge different elements into harmonious union. This is called fusion. Learning visual art is the basis of learning the principles of fusion. The study of art is to learn the first steps in gathering elements to create the whole. Because our education system itself is so divided and separated into these segments of study, and a holistic approach to education is not taught, kind of reminds me of the military's need to know doctrine that they have and they keep everything separate so that nobody can ever put the whole picture together that's what they're doing here so the only place left for us to get us some what i call fusion crack is from creating art because art is fusion if you look at the process of fusion what is it it's a fusionable nuclei joined with another nuclei and then there's an energy release and then there's the fusion product. So the artist gets the selected elements, assembles them, and creates the artist's creation, creation, which is the fusion product. So we create art by the process of elimination and inclusion. And a finished piece of art is a process of the organization of elements into that harmonic whole. So why is this so important? It's the same process that nature uses to create life itself. And nature in turn is designed by prime creator. So when we are creating art that is in harmony with life, we're acting as the offspring and the sons and daughters of God. <laughs> My favorite word ever is verily. Verily, verily, I say unto you, these things shall ye do and more. And then I'm going to add to that, may your God gene be activated, for it holds the secrets of creation within it. But lo and behold, those who concoct our education system they know this. The system is quick to discourage artists and independent creativity that operates outside of their system. And the promotion of independence or sovereignty in any way across the board is scoffed at. So these self-appointed leaders of the bloodline, dynastic, multi-trillionaire, holding our world under siege, what happened in the past was they saw what happened and they witnessed the burgeoning of human creativity during the Renaissance because it had such a huge focus on the arts. And then beyond the Renaissance, all these incredible inventions started to spring forth into the 1800s, right after the Renaissance period. So these the rubber rubber barons came in and then they quickly sought to prevent another dangerous surge of our human amazingness by establishing their think tank system to curtail our creativity through establishing a hierarchical education system which as i mentioned before i call academentia in other words the great forgetting we must never know how powerful we are anyway the best example i can think of really to illustrate my point are tesla's drawings yes nikola tesla they were drawings as well as being diagrams because he used those drawings and made prototypes of free energy devices and then when that big greedy rubber baron of them all the biggest greediest one of them all came along jp morgan who was financing tesla's work he asked tesla how he would be able to monitor his inventions in order to charge money for their output and tesla said no he couldn't do that he didn't know how to monitor it for 
cash. So what did JP Morgan do? He had Tesla's amazing tower at Wardenclyffe just destroyed real quick after that. But we have to look at the fact that Tesla's creativity, his ability to draw, had the power to change the world for the better and to contribute to the positive evolution of humanity. Because with free energy, we're all free. But the trouble is that those in control have made sure that free energy would never be available to the masses. But it's too late now. We're out of the box. Too many people are working to bring this tech to fruition. And what happens when people jump off the treadmill? Yup, they become creative. They have time to be their creative selves and apply their time to creating an aesthetic and beautiful world where no one suffers anymore. And there's peace across the realm and it happens that fast. And as we know from a NASA study, 98% of us are born creative geniuses, but by the time we've reached adulthood, the creativity levels across the board have gone all the way down to 2%. So I say that if we start teaching art to our young ones, we can reverse this dismal situation and rectify the current low creative output of humanity. But even better, those whose creative neurons are lying dormant in their brain, they can rejuvenate them by studying the basics of art and beginning to apply their creativity to the world as it is. Because when you learn the basics of art, it easily unthaws those once art frozen creative neurons in your brain and you're free to be creative again and you can break that block. So if you know anyone who you can teach art to, that would help a lot in this giant project here of me trying to get everybody to be an artist again on the side, just so that they have their creativity intact. And you know, our recent history shows us that we were once a very creative species. And much of the architecture and decoration within and without the structures of Tartaria were glorious to behold. And not only that, but the Antiquitech in operation was literally bringing heaven down to earth. And the resonance this process created was a healing energy that surrounded the people and kept them in ease and good health. And there was no need for any of this big pharma BS. Everybody was healthy and creative. The artistry being employed using this technology was not only aesthetically marvelous, but it operated in absolute and vibrational synchronicity with the vibrant genius design and complexity of our human bodies keeping it at that peak performance level. This was always the true purpose of art and our highest calling, which is to create. It is the lack of emphasis on our creativity and artistry that has led us to the bleak and barren landscape we now find ourselves traversing today. So it's time to break out of this gray malaise and start learning and teaching art again, quick. We gotta catch it before it becomes the sole domain of artificial intelligence, which is fast taking over the art world, I have to say. So that's the way art can change the world. So can get more in-depth info and, and, and a few art basics teaching lessons. If you check out my art course at the New Earth University, a reminder, and I'll leave that link below. 
and um, you got to scroll all the way down. There's a workshop, and then below that is the A to Z holistic art course. It's quite a ways down. So, and then a reminder that in this light where there's this lack of creativity and it seems so out of reach and separated from everything else, you know, you have your drawing books, learn to paint, work in acrylic, all these separate books. But the book I wrote, which is called Splat, it's got everything under one roof so that you can go in there and you can do, learn the basics of every area, drawing, perspective, light, composition, color. Plus it has inspiration methods in it, which a lot of art books don't come with that. So that being said, I honestly believe that art can change the world. So please help me share this message out there. We just need to know in our bones how important our creativity is and how this system has sucked all our creativity out of us for its own agenda. And we've got nothing left of our own creativity. And even if you don't want to be a painter or whatever, the benefits you get from learning artistry and how to bring elements together and that get that fusion crack going on. You can take it to gardening, you can take it to cooking, you can take it to designing, sewing, the way you dress. So many things it's useful for to enhance our immediate lives. It doesn't necessarily have to be to save the whole world. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like this video and please subscribe and share and click the like button. Give me a couple of comments. That's always nice. And I'll probably see you soon with my next video. Bye.